But um, I think the majority of you, of all uh, six of you, have probably heard about uh, Husky Express before. And uh, we started uh, on campus by uh, my business partner, Adam Jack, now founded it back in 1999, actually, uh, when he found out that um, he paid some girls on his floor to do his laundry, and all of his friends said, can we pay you to have them do it? So that's how it got started. But uh, I think the, the goal of what I'd like to accomplish tonight is not so much talk about myself and Husky Express. I'll talk, talk to you a little bit about uh, you know, the company and what we're trying to do and how we got there and the huge mountains we still have to climb as a company, um, and also life uh, as a student and an entrepreneur. So <clears throat> um, you see it says Garment Ballet up on the screen. And the reason it says Garment Ballet is that we've noticed over the years, as we have tried to expand, that we don't just apply to a student audience anymore. The majority of our business is actually the downtown condominium markets and uh, the residential neighborhoods across Boston. So we've decided to focus just in, just in Metro Boston. And the reason we've done that is because some of our competitors, uh, companies like Zoots, I don't know if you've heard of them, they uh, would drive 25 miles to do one delivery, and we drive one mile to do 25 deliveries. So the, you know, the economies of scale are really there for us to capitalize on. One of the biggest things that we learned is that nobody wanted to be around for us to do deliveries. It was too inconvenient to meet people. So we invented this, uh, this locker system called uh, the Launder Locker. And we, uh, we figured out that if we can put this into dorms, most likely people are gonna feel more comfortable using the service, and uh, then that spread to a lot of condominiums that don't have concierges. So the laundry locker has kind of morphed itself into what is a virtual concierge. And uh, there, like I said, there's now two, two different companies, Garment Ballet, which is the laundry and dry cleaning delivery service, and then Husky Express, which is the software development, engineering, and uh, administration of Garment Ballet. So the model that we're gonna move forward with in Boston for the time being is to grow the laundry and dry cleaning to about three or four million dollars in revenue and then start to franchise the system that we built um, software wise out into Providence, Philadelphia, New York, different cities where it's the same type of demographic with working professional and students. And one of the uh, you know the big the big leaps in trying to figure out where we want to go is uh, you know how, how fast we can get there. And so we, we hired um, some programmers from Northeastern, actually, uh, one programmer originally, and we, you know, we thought that in about six months we'd have our own software system, we'd be up and running, and automation would just happen. And the reason we wanted automation was because it was so hard to keep track of all the details of everybody's unique preferences. We look at our business kind of like FedEx, where they pick up a package, then they deliver it. The only difference is that we open up that package, and in the middle, uh, we have to care for everybody's garments exactly the way they want it. But um, moving on, this um, we'll get into how the locker works. Some of you have it in your building, but th these are some of the other service points that we uh, we deliver to. So, in the residential neighborhoods, a big area is door to doors, and uh, the way we do that is we we take keys from people and we mark it into our database, and then once it's into our system, people from around the city can log online and see where we already have access to. And so that enables them to um, see you know, how easy it is for them to register because we can already get to where they want to go. And we also do in-person, but we try and do that as, uh, as little as possible. This is the, the revenue ramp that we've had um, as of 2007. We uh, hit about 750,000 in revenue last year, and we're on to about 850,000 this year, which isn't a whole lot, but we've kind of held back the the ramps on marketing until we got a lot of the software in place because we didn't want to bring on too many customers and uh, have the service, the quality of service diminish because if we did that, we'd start to lose our current customers. So it's it's really it's really tempting and uh, to, to always try and sell and make more money, but one of the things you kind of have to look at is uh, how realistic is it to, to bring on more customers and am I going to damage my current business? But you can see that in 2005, when we uh, installed the lockers, that was really when our sales became exponential because people felt a lot more secure using the service. And a little bit of stats about our business. Uh, a thousand delivery locations, the majority of those that we all have, we have key access to. And we're just at about, uh, just under 22,000 customers, so that's, that's great. Like I said, the two, two groups we service are working professionals, college students, 
and we really tried to target this down. Uh, it's, it's really easy to get enthusiastic and say, oh, I want to sell to everybody. There's so many potential customers, and there really are. But we had to target our market uh, according to the segments. So after we segmented it, we figured out that the easiest groups of people for us to, to reach out to were working professionals who had disposable income, they, had, uh, they lived in our service area, and they understood opportunity cost. And then also, not necessarily to students, but to parents of students. And so we created plan-based laundry. So it was similar to what parents were used to purchasing. They were used to purchasing meal plans and housing plans. And so it kind of fit right into the package. And then the push now is to get it onto tuition at all the different schools in the area. That would be, uh, that would be a great revenue stream. But um, we do laundry and dry cleaning. It's just a breakdown of that. This is, um, by the way, this is a, the reason I'm not getting into detail of all this is this was a slideshow from uh, the Global Student Entrepreneur Awards, which was in Chicago uh, <coughs> last, like, what, the beginning of the month. And what the GSEA is, is it's a global competition. And if any of you guys have businesses, it's definitely um, a great thing to either get nominated for or nominate yourself. And probably about a 1,000 people around the world apply, and then it got whittled down to 26 that all went out to Chicago to compete. It got whittled down to six and then down to three. And so it was a great honor to win that. And I wanted to just show you, you know, that's where these slides come from, and so that's why I'm going to kind of skip over some of them. Pricing structure. So <clears throat> a big part of, of what it is to run your own business is, uh, is facing obstacles. And there's, when you run your own company, there's constant highs and there's constant lows, and there's peak, what, we, what I call peaks and valleys. And uh, the peaks are often so high that you think nothing could go wrong, and then the valleys are, are so low, you never think you're going to get out of them. And <clears throat> it's times like uh, that when you're down there that you think, oh, you know, I can't do this anymore. I just, I just want to give up and get a normal job. And it's usually right about then when you think about a normal job that you say, no, what am I talking about? I really, you know, I love what I do. And like I said, the first, the first obstacle that we had was security because we had built a business. We had just bought a laundromat. We had all this faith that it was going to work because we had like 300 students that were using the service. And then all of a sudden, we didn't sell what we thought we were expecting to. And so we